Let's go ahead and see how we're able to use uh, declarative services and BND tools to create an OSGI service, ultimately an OSGI application. So over here in Library Developer Studio, let's go ahead and get started, heading up to File, followed by New, and then Other. So we're gonna be creating a BND OSGI project. So up here in the wizard, I'm gonna type BND. Once you have the BND OSGI project selected, we'll go ahead and click Next, giving it a little bit of time to load up. And it's gonna give us a warning asking us to create a BND workspace first. So we're gonna take a quick sidestep to create that BND workspace. Uh, the workspace itself has all of the dependencies that we need in order to make BND tools work. So we're gonna keep all of the defaults here and then select Next. It might take a little bit of time, so if it does, no worries. But once you see what I see, we're only going to have one option. So we're going to select this option here and then click Next. It'll give us a list of all of the changes, all of the files and folders it's going to give us within the workspace. And then once you see that, go ahead and click Finish. It's gonna ask us if you wanna switch perspectives. Again, I'll leave it up to you whether or not you wanna switch. But again, personally, I like to select no, keeping the current perspective that I have. Again, if it takes a little bit of time to see what I see, that's perfectly fine. But once you see the different templates, we're heading back over to create our BND OSGI workspace. So we're gonna be creating a component. So let's go ahead and select component development, and then we'll select or click next. Starting off, we're gonna give this BND project a name. The name we'll give it is OSGI-Service. All right. From there, we're going to uncheck derived from project name. So that way we're able to give the Java package a specific name. So we'll call it com.liferay.training.osgi.service. So those are the only changes we're going to be making here. You can go ahead and leave all of the defaults. We'll click next. We'll click next and then go ahead and click finish. So we've created the service. First thing I wanna highlight is, again, BND Tools gives us the, uh, the ease of making the manifest file, and it does so by giving us this BND file right here, right? It allows us to use this nice UI to configure some of the things within the manifest file. If you wanna work directly within the source of the manifest file, you can always click on the source tab right here. In any case, let's go ahead and start creating our service. So we're gonna start off by creating the API. We'll implement the API and then we'll create a client to call our service. So we're gonna start off with the API. We're gonna do a little house cleaning in the source folder. So opening up the source, opening up the package and then deleting the example.java that's within there. I'm sure, so I'll go ahead and click okay. Let's start off by creating an interface so right click the package, head over to new, and then we're gonna select interface. The service that we're gonna be creating is just gonna tell us the time or get the time for us. So over here, creating the interface, we're gonna call it clock API. Once you have that typed out, go ahead and click finish. And as always, if I'm going too fast, feel free to pause the video. If I'm going too slow, feel free to speed me up. All right, so here within the uh, interface, before I get started, one thing I'm going to do is enable line numbers. So you'll see kind of a gray area, a little bit off to the left. If you right click it and then select show line numbers, uh, gives us a common reference point. All right, so very simple. We're going to create uh, just one method here. Uh, it's going to be a method called get time. Right, returning a string, nothing too special. Once you have this copy and pasted or typed out, go ahead and save the file. Right, so public string get time. Very simple API, right? Nothing outside of the realm of Java just yet. We're gonna go ahead and implement the API and we're gonna be implementing it as a component. So with the package created, gonna right click it, head over to new 
and then create a Java class. So this class is going to be called clock impul. So the name of the class is clock impul, and then we'll go ahead and click finish. All right, feel free to copy and paste if you want. All right, I'm gonna type this out to the best of my abilities, trying to watch my spelling. So this is going to be implementing the clock API. So implements clock API. I'll use control shift O to bring in any imports that I need. Uh, this is just an error uh, since I haven't implemented the method yet. Right, so we talked about how we wanna make this a component. And so the way to do that using declarative services is just using the at component annotation like so. I'll use control shift O as an Oscar to bring in the import for the component. If you're on a different operating system or if the keyboard shortcut doesn't work, feel free to click source up here and then select organize import. It'll give you the keyboard shortcut. So we talked about how a component can have attributes or options that can be configurable. One of the things that we like to do in the library world with a component is specify or be explicit as to what the functionality of the component is. The way we do that is by specifying a specific attribute within the component service equals, and we typically take what's being implemented. So in this case, uh, what's being implemented is the clock API referencing that interface or the class. So this is going to tell the service registry hey, I have a component who is implementing the clock API service or the clock API interface, okay? And then let's go ahead and implement the method uh, get time. All right, so we'll use at override. I need a capital O there, okay? So public string, gotta get the time. And we're going to use the Java util date, right, to get the date for us. So creating a new date object, right, and then we're going to uh, have it print out the date like so, uh, not get string, to string. There we go. Going to use Control Shift O to bring in the necessary imports. Again, using the Java util date to help us out here. All right, and then I'll save along the way. All right, let me double check my code here. I think we're looking good. So, so far, pretty simple, right? It looks very similar to what we would do in the Java world with some OSGI flair in the mix. Again, wanna highlight the at component annotation, making this class a component. It'll register within the service registry as a service that implements the clock API. Next up, we're gonna be creating uh, the quote unquote client. The client that we're gonna be creating is going to be a command within the go, go shell. So we've seen commands like LB, start, stop. We're gonna be creating a brand new command to add into the go, go shell. All right, so let's go ahead and implement the client. So we're going to right click the package, OSGI service one more time heading over to new, and then we're gonna create a class. The name of this class is going to be clock command. All right, so clock command is going to be the name of the class. We'll go ahead and click finish. All right, so we are not going to be implementing anything. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna make this a component Okay, within the component annotation, right, we can specify a number of attributes or properties. So there is a specific attribute called property, which we can specify properties. And that's just, uh, that's exactly what we're going to be doing here. We're gonna have two properties we're specifying. They're gonna work in tandem with each other. So osgi.command.function is equal to and what this is equal to is a specific method within this class. So we're gonna create a, a method called tell time. Now I know this isn't in standard Java syntax. Usually we capitalize the T, 
but since this is going to be a go go shell command, uh, we'll keep it more along the lines of the syntax within the go go shell. All right, so that's the function, and then we're going to give uh, the function a scope. The scope basically is just saying, uh, where is this command coming from? Is it coming from Equinox? Is it coming from Felix? Is it coming from somewhere else? So in this case, we're saying this command is coming from training. Again, at the end of the day, this can be whatever it is that you want. Okay, again, in the library world, we like to be specific as to specifying what the component is implementing or what is the functionality of the component. Since we don't see it implements here, if you wanna be very technical, you can say that this class is implementing the object class, um, but right, we don't have to go that technical. So if we are not implementing anything, we can reference the class itself like so. Okay, I'll bring in the import using control shift O. Okay, now what I wanna do with this command, since this is the client, I wanna make a service call, right? So in order to make a service call using the OSGI world, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna first create a service object or an API object as I like to call it. So we're gonna create an object from the interface uh, clock API and then the name of the object, we're gonna call it clock. Now to add our OSGI flare, what we need to do is we need to ask the service registry for the implementation of the API. The language I like to use is, we're asking for a reference of a component that implements this interface. So we created the implementation over in clock impl. We created it as a component so using the at reference annotation, it's going to ask the service registry for that component. Use control shift O to bring in the import for the reference. And now we have the API or the service object that we are able to call. Again, up here on line number eight, we, we said we're gonna be creating a function called tell time, right? That function is going to be calling a method with the same name. So we need to call or we need to create that method tell time. So public, uh, we can print in the console, so we're not gonna return anything. So we can call this void, and then it has to match what I specified in line number eight, so tell time. Again, I know it's not proper Java syntax, but that's okay. So we can just print to the console, system out uh, print, okay? And then we can call the service, right? So calling the service is uh, get time method, like so. Call the service to get the time and then print it within the console. So we'll go ahead and save. So very good, we have created our first OSGI application. We created three parts of it, the API, the implementation of the API, and then the client to call the API. Last but not least, let's go ahead and test this out. So to test this out, we're going to double click this launch BND run. A couple of things we're, we wanna specify along the way. We wanna say one of the requirements in our runtime is the OSGI service that we created. So just dragging and dropping it over at the run requirements. I'm going to be explicit in saying, I want this to run on Java 1.8. So 1.8 under uh, execution environment. And then the last thing is maybe if I made some mistakes along the way, uh, I want this to auto resolve on save. So if I make some changes to any part of my project, it'll account for those changes. And then just make sure to save. I like to use control S and then let's run it. So clicking run OSGI. All right, so I'll type in the console tell time and it prints out the time. June 20th is today. That's almost 11.30 over here in the Pacific. So very good. Uh, this is accurate on my end. So that wraps it up for this exercise, and I will see you in the next video.